Hey everybody, my name is Joel Houston I'm from Hillsong United. And I'm Ron Luce from Team Mania. The road is narrow, but the gaze is set on the love of Christ until the very end. I Heart is uh, it's all about people, you know, and um, it's all about love and it's understanding that um, that we are loved by God and He's called us to love. And love isn't actually about me, it's not about, uh, you know, what I can get out of it, it's about what I can give. My prayer is that you know, people would see this film and not just move to go, I was moved and that's it, but they'd actually be moved towards doing something. The I Heart Revolution has moved so many people to get involved and give money and, and take action and um, so it's great to be partnered with Hillsong. The only way that we're going to make a difference in this world is to actually play the part that only we can play. That's the heart of this million acts of sacrificial love. What, what we're looking for is people that would join together to say, come on, let's give believers, followers of Christ, not a new reputation, but the original reputation that they had when Jesus first left the planet. Now, a number of years ago, um, we had probably the craziest worship night of all time and uh, and there was you know thousands of people there and it was wild and it was crazy and you know we finished off the conference and I remember getting in my car with a friend of mine and driving back to my house and on the way we thought we'd stop and get some food and uh, I remember we stopped downtown Sydney and uh, we're walking past this derelict old building and um, we saw a garbage bag moving. Well I was just in Africa just came from Kenya a few days ago and we were out really in the middle of nowhere uh, with the Maasai tribe who have had a uh, five years of drought. And so their animals are dying, their cows are dying, the people are dying. And I remember um, finding this, this gentleman um, in the middle of winter, uh, basically wrapped in a, in a garbage bag lying on a, a pile of, of needles and all sorts of stuff that was disgusting. They're trying to milk the cows the next morning and there's no milk from the cows because they have no grass to eat, no water to drink. And it just breaks your heart. Half their herd is, is, has died already and many of the villages, once their herd finishes dying, people in the villages start killing themselves because they have no reason to live. Their whole life revolves around the cow. So we began to ask them, what could we do? We were asking the, the pastor who took taken us there, uh, what could we do to make a difference? What, what could we do to help? He says, well, you know, um, you come and dig wells. You know, the water's only 20 feet deep. If, if some young people could come and dig some wells, then they'd have water for their livestock and for the people. How can we say no to an opportunity? You're looking at people who, if they don't have something to eat or drink, they're not going to be alive anymore. Not just the livestock, but the village is going to die. I remember looking into his eyes and realizing that he's a human being and that he's loved by God the same way as anybody else, that he's valuable. I remember in that moment thinking about the vast contrast between standing on a stage in front of 20,000 people and it being an amazing experience and glorifying God and it being killer, but then all of a sudden being confronted with um, the beauty of humanity. One of the things in, in the Maasai tribe is that they, they actually listen to foreigners more than they listen to their own people. And when foreigners come and tell them that there's a God that loves them, that uh, he gave their son, gave his son and uh, for them, they believe us. So many of them committed their hearts to the Lord, and so we, we need to give them a message, but we need to demonstrate the message as well. The majority of the world doesn't realize that they need to be touched by the love of God. They, whatever religion they might be following, or there's no religion they follow maybe, they're just grinding it out every day for survival. So yeah, that's uh, really what the, the, uh, the whole world was like when Jesus left the planet. When he gave the Great Commission and he said, go into this world, this world was um, devoid of love. I mean, it was murderous and heinous. He said, by the way you love, by the way you demonstrate love one for another, that's the kind of reputation, that's how people are gonna know that you're following me. No, I think it's actually being prepared to kind of see people wherever they're at, see them the way that Jesus saw us, and be prepared to actually ask the question, how can I help you, how can I serve you? There's no, no agenda, realizing that you know it's not about us getting a plaque on the wall or getting some photos so we feel like we've done a good deed, but being prepared to go, you know what? 
love, it costs. And the idea of sacrifice is costly. And being prepared to do that, honestly, for the will of somebody else's and for the good of somebody else, that's a beautiful thing. One person can make all the difference with one act of sacrificial love. Sometimes you see the videos and you see so many people in need, you think, well, what can I do? I mean, I'm just a person. Even if I win, I'd be part of a team. Yeah, but every team is made up of individuals, and the more individuals there are, the more individuals give love. We're talking about doing sacrificial acts of love. That is sacrificing, it costs us something. It might be hard. We're talking about going to a different location, a country, a place that they don't know about the love of Jesus and sleeping on a hard floor and raising your money to get there and helping you dig a well, something that's not comfortable, leaving our comfort zone and taking some action because love requires action. Will you do something today? Make a difference now. Be a part of a revolution of young people, old, all alike, saying we're gonna sacrifice, lay down our lives to make a difference in people who've never heard about the love of Christ. Just for